this is my way of explaining what it is that I've been doing when I've been trying to uh, salvage the stuff that most people barrow off site, you see. Uh, my, uh, one of my children once when asked what I did for a living, he says he washes mud to his school teacher. So I went down in the picture of the school like nobody's business. Um, so let me just explain that in the fines, particularly in between the, uh, in, in the, in the matrix to the gravel, there are insect remains. Uh, these are not very well preserved. In fact, after we've treated them, they're not even moderately well preserved because we beat them up rather badly. But they're well enough preserved to be identified. Um, almost all of them, but not all, almost all of them, are remains of beetles because their skeletons are so robust. They survive very well. The next thing is they're also caddis remains. You know what caddis flies are? I don't know how your biology is, but uh, caddis larvae have um, skeletons which are very characteristic and identified. Um, first of all, I'll talk primarily about beetle bits. To give you some idea, there are 143 different taxa that I've got out of here so far. That gives you a clue. Now, don't be amazed by this. There are more beetle species than there are flowering plants, for instance. It is well known that somebody once asked, I think it was J.B.S. Haldane, what he thought of God. And now J.B.S., of course, was a well-known atheist. And he suddenly said he must have had an extraordinary love of beetles because he made so many. They are one of the most pro uh, complex uh, uh, group of organisms in the world. So therefore, if I say there are an awful lot of them, it doesn't matter very much because there are an awful lot of beetles anyhow. Now, of the ones that we've got here, over just over a hundred so far have been identified to species. And that matters, because species very much to t tell you about the environment in a way that genera fail to do. So if you can get things down to species, then this matters very much indeed. Um, the species that we can recognize are exactly the same as modern. So I don't care how old this deposit is, Every species, every bit that we look at, can be matched with a modern animal. So there is no evolution at all during the Quaternary, in spite of the oscillations of climate that you know of. That the oscillations of climate I believe to be responsible for their stability and not the other way around is the exact inverse of what most people think. Because they stir the pee pool, okay? Now, what do we... T we can tell two things from these beetles. First of all, each individual species has a remarkably restricted environmental requirement. Whether they be water beetles or terrestrial beetles, whether they be carnivores or phytophakes, all sorts of different sorts of beetles have particular sorts of environmental preferences. Therefore, by collecting a list, and I'll just show you what a list looks like, because um, numbers don't mean anything unless we tot them up. And here is the formal list. From here, and this is the these are the samples here, the numbers of individuals and species down this line. Watch, one page, two pages. Let's try again. Three pages, four pages of them. That's what the number of bits of information. Every single one of those is like a piece of a jigsaw puzzle, and they all go together to provide us with a pretty clear idea of the environment here. Of these, some of the most interesting things are things that you might imagine are the water beetles. We have a whole stack of water beetles here which would suggest that we're de dealing with a very <coughs> large, or well, under Cadices, large, quiet, mature river. Meandering, yes, but not with riffles and pools as often happens. So it's fairly gentle flow all the time. It is surrounded by a vast uh, reed swamp. On the shingle banks, occasionally, the sort of things you're looking at here, there are beetles that actually prefer to live in the shingles as well. Individual samples are rather different. All the ones down here, at this part here, where everything is very common, are that grey gravel that I've been uh, uh, collecting today. Uh, and that is the most prolific 
it doesn't look intuitively as the right stuff at all. You would expect small animals to be preserved in the fine-grained settlements. Well, look, there are almost none of them. <laughs> all of those animals, the, oh, the terrestrial ones, of a, 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 a very large variety of them. I won't go into the details of it now. But what I want you to imagine is a very, very large swamp with a river meandering through it. Next thing. If one of the strange things is in this fauna, the rarity of dung beetles. If people have been living here, or indeed if many of the big mammals have been living here, dung beetles would have been very common. But they're extremely rare, suggesting that in practice, Big animals were also rare, but there's a problem. These dung beetles are entirely terrestrial. Therefore, if the dung is in the water, the dung is inaccessible to these beetles. So we have a problem of how to explain what we're looking at when it seems to be contrary to what you know, people have been looking for here in where bones and things of this sort. Um, that's one of the interesting things. The other thing is almost none of the beetles that are associated with uh, with um, dried out carcasses. Again, if you're looking at a swamp, dried out carcasses are not going to be very common. Uh, the, let me just think, we have wood uh, boring beetles, quite a number of them, including things rather happily like death watch beetles. Death watch beetles lives indoors in Britain, but very rarely outside, giving a hint that perhaps we're dealing with at least southern British fauna. But some of the beetles, one in particular uh, uh, is that uh, uh, Sabista, which is a, be a water beetle, cannot survive in Britain even though it arrives here. It's a terrific um, migrator. It's a very powerful flyer. The beetle itself is that big, so we're not going to overlook it very easily. And it flies in from the continent and fails to colonize because the climate isn't suitable. So the suggestion from these things is that the climate is either as warm as Britain or slightly warmer, according to what uh, these beetles are suggesting. One of my reasons for collecting a large amount of material today is to see whether I can augment this southern group. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's just the tipping. Um, so that uh, the next thing is beetles can give you a pretty shrewd idea of climate. Um, thermal climate in particular, and we have a method of quantifying this, which I won't go into now, but it's in the literature and fairly well known. But if you think of thermal climate in terms of mean monthly temperatures, it's the easiest. Now, nobody experiences mean temperatures uh, any more than people experience climate. So these are, uh, are if you like, abstractions. The mean monthly temperature of the warmest month, i.e. July, lay somewhere between 14 and 19. Now 14 is a little bit cool. 19 is, if anything, slightly warmer than now. Comparing present day beetle assemblages or treating them in this fashion suggests that the temperature was nearer the higher end of those two. So 19 degrees or a bit more. The mean temperature of the coldest months, i.e. January and February, is somewhere between minus 5 and plus 4. That's not a fat lot different from present time. It's also interesting that, in fact, you have been finding things like hippopotamus and things here. Now, um, it's interesting that hippopotamus is turning up in situations which are only 2 or 3 degrees warmer than present time. So it's when you look at something which is like hippopotamus as an indicator, it may, well be, it may well be that it isn't indicating African temperatures, but something like Central European temperatures. And if, if you want to test this, go down to Longleat House, and there they have hippos living happily in the ponds round about at the present time. Are we having a sort of rival concern? <laughs> now, what else can I say? Very little about the um, people ask about temp about um, the uh, 
influence, marine influence here. I am fairly certain that some of the stuff underneath is marine because there are no such thing as marine insects. What is more, marine insect fossils decompose on oxidation very, very rapidly. So the great, in order to the, for them to survive, they have to be really isolated in an anoxic environment. So I think that some of the deposits were probably being winnowed, perhaps intertidally, and beetles have been lost. But two, um, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think, I've got one at least, which is exclusively a salt marsh beetle, hinting that the, the, the tide, the, the, the marine influence wasn't that very far away. But it, there, this is rather uncommon. If you go to somewhere like uh, the um, Stone Point in this, uh, 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 near the Isle of Wight, near the Solent, where there is an Ipswichian, a last interglacial deposit, it's stuffed with, with um, salt, uh, salt marsh animals. This is not. And I suggest that your river that here is at the very top limit of saline influences. Um, in other words, we're not really dealing for much of the time with genuinely uh, subtidal. What else can I say? Age. I can tell you almost nothing about the age, sadly, because all the beetles are still living today, so we cannot adopt the usual evolutionary sequences that tells you whereabouts you are because this particular vole has evolved into that sort of vole. It doesn't work with beetles. But what does work with beetles occasionally is extremely exotic species, which are very, very unusual. Well, you'll be sad to hear that there isn't a single decent exotic beetle in this bunch to tell me anything mm. new. So I can tell you about the environment, I can tell you about climate, but I can say it does absolutely nothing at all about the age of the deposit other than it's interglacial. And you can take your pick as to which interglacial you put it into. Is that okay, Simon? Yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you.